Mr. Recap presenting my sexy student. This movie covers the story of a young girl who fell in love with her teacher and ends up having a sexual relationship with him. The story opens with Cairo, a young girl whose parents, both lawyers working abroad, have left her alone in their Tennessee house. Cairo finds solace in writing, using it as a means to unwind from the solitude of her situation. Despite her isolation, she navigates her way to school each day, traversing through the woods while wearing a mini skirt and high heels. Upon arriving at school, Cairo encounters Jonathan Miller, their teacher. Jonathan is a middle-aged man who once harbored dreams of becoming an author but ultimately failed. Despite the difference in their ages, Jonathan assumes a paternal role in Cairo's life. However, Cairo privately admires Jonathan. As Cairo arrives early for class, Jonathan asks her to start reading the books they'll study for the semester. He's surprised when Cairo says she's already read all 12 required books. They chat about literature until Winnie. Cairo's friend and Jonathan's repeating student, arrives and invites Cairo to eat with her. After the girls leave, Jonathan, curious about Cairo's reading choices, checks out the books on her desk. Suddenly, his friend Boris shows up, grabs a book Jonathan was reading, and begins teasingly reading aloud an explicit passage. Jonathan tries to stop Boris from reading the naughty part, but Boris won't listen. Boris sees a book Jonathan wrote, and Jonathan is surprised to find out Cairo has his book. When Jonathan arrived home, he found his wife, Beatrice, engrossed in her computer work. He tried to chat with her, but she seemed too busy to talk. Jonathan called her right away to share his excitement about one of his students reading his book. While they were talking, Beatrice's co-worker Amy called her urgently. After the call, Jonathan flirted with his wife over the phone, and they enjoyed some drinks together. Things started heating up between them, but just as they were about to become intimate, Amy called again, leaving Jonathan frustrated. The next day, Jonathan confided in Boris about his disappointing weekend and how Amy's interruptions ruined a romantic moment with Beatrice. Boris teased Jonathan about his mishaps and proceeded to talk about his own life. As they chatted, they noticed Cairo emerging from the woods nearby. Jonathan, still feeling agitated from the previous day, stared at her as she approached. Cairo, unaware of the tension, greeted them with a friendly hello after removing her headphones. Feeling sexually frustrated, Jonathan tries to maintain his composure by engaging in casual conversation with Cairo. When Winnie claimed to have accidentally dropped her things in the locker room, Boris saw through her ploy. He approached her and inquired about her needs, realizing she was trying to seduce him. Noticing this, Cairo tells Winnie she's quite bold. Winnie tries to give Cairo ideas for an essay, but Cairo thinks they seem too ordinary. Suddenly, Winnie suggests Cairo try charming teachers for essay material. Feeling confused, Cairo points out the big age gap between them, finding it strange. However, Winnie, being flirtatious, reassures Cairo that it's okay. She suggests that Jonathan seems like a nice and gentle man, making him a good choice for Cairo's first date, as she won't feel any discomfort. Despite Cairo's initial reservations, Winnie's playful persistence piques Cairo's interest even more. Winnie continues to tease Cairo, mentioning Jonathan's longing looks at her, which leaves Cairo feeling embarrassed and flustered. As the days go by, Cairo's interest in sex grows, and her desire becomes overwhelming. She yearns to experience it fully. In class, her eyes frequently seek out Jonathan, signaling her attraction to him. One day, Jonathan quietly approaches her from behind and whispers for her to meet him in his office after class. In Jonathan's office, he converses with Boris and invites him to join him and his wife for dinner. Boris agrees, and they have a great time dancing before departing. Cairo happens to catch Jonathan dancing, and after Boris leaves, Jonathan tries to mimic Boris's dance moves. They share a laugh, and then they discuss Winnie. Jonathan expresses his approval of their friendship and continues to talk about Cairo's living situation. The teacher also congratulates Cairo on her excellent work in one of her recent pieces of writing. He is impressed by her ability to memorize certain lines from her writing. Recognizing Cairo's talent, the professor asks her to write a short story in the style of her favorite author. He believes that if she excels in this task, she will pass the entire semester with flying colors. Cairo views this as a perfect opportunity and eagerly agrees to take on the challenge. Suddenly, Cairo surprises her professor by revealing that she has read his books, leaving him speechless. She quotes a part of his book, just as she memorized part of what Cairo had written. The professor is delighted and confesses that the book she quoted was the first he ever wrote, which holds a special significance for him. Miller admits that he hasn't written anything in a long time. He explains that since getting married, his life has become more ordinary, lacking the material to inspire a book. Cairo, believing he is simply uninspired, challenges him to find that spark again and start writing once more. He invites Cairo to meet that weekend to further discuss the short story. At the meeting spot, Jonathan surprises Cairo from behind as they engage in conversation. Jonathan remarks on how they've been honing their literary skills together for a while while a poet named Elliot performs. Cairo steals glances at Jonathan, who listens attentively. 
They later critique Elliot's poetry, exchanging thoughts and opinions. As Cairo smokes, she offers Jonathan a cigarette, which he accepts. On a new school day, Cairo decides to change how she looks. She brings coffee to Boris and Miller, and they all seem more confident, playing around and sharing a cigarette. Sure, here's a refined version of your text with proper punctuation and clarity. Cairo tells Winnie that even though the professor didn't comment on her new look, she knows he liked it. Later, she confides in Miller that she wants to write her story like Henry Miller, a famous author known for his works on love and sex. Miller worries this might not be a good idea, as it could cause trouble at school. But Cairo believes it will make her story more interesting. After considering it, Miller decides to trust her and lets her go ahead with her plan. Later, Jonathan's phone buzzes with a text from his wife inviting him on a weekend getaway. Cairo approaches him to discuss her short story. But Jonathan, preoccupied with thoughts of his wife, quickly approves her writing without much consideration. When they're alone, Winnie teases Cairo, joking that she is trying to seduce her professor. Cairo exaggerates her actions, much to her friend's amusement, as she frantically searches for her missing phone. Jonathan's plans are repeatedly interrupted by Amy's persistent calls. Surprised to hear Cairo's voice when his phone rings, he learns she accidentally placed her phone in his bag. As they converse, Jonathan's wife expresses frustration over their postponed getaway and volunteers to return Cairo's phone. Jonathan quickly agrees, despite the incoming rain. As he makes his way there, a heavy downpour suddenly begins. Upon arriving, Jonathan spots Cairo walking outside in a seductive dress. Locking eyes, they share a moment of intense attraction as she approaches him in the pouring rain. Overwhelmed by passion, they embrace and share a passionate kiss. In the days following their intense encounter, Jonathan finds himself consumed by thoughts of Cairo. Suddenly, she sends him his midterm test, snapping him out of his reverie. Waking up from his distracted state, Jonathan's wife urges him to leave her alone while she attends to other matters. He retreats to a small house nearby, where he prints out Cairo's finished work and begins reading it. Engrossed in the captivating story with its adult themes, Jonathan's excitement peaks as he envisions Cairo in the scenes. Fueling his desire, unable to resist any longer, he hastily removes his pants to satisfy himself. The next day, Cairo arrives in class dressed enticingly, but Jonathan's demeanor has noticeably changed. He doesn't greet her warmly as before, sensing something is amiss. Cairo asks if everything is alright. Jonathan expresses disappointment with the explicit content of her writing. Cairo tries to explain that she rejected the explicit parts, but Jonathan remains unmoved. He refuses to listen to her and ultimately decides to reject both her work and their relationship, even criticizing her writing and expressing regret for having trusted her. When Cairo attempts to convey her true feelings, Jonathan's refusal to acknowledge them only fuels her anger. She lashes out labeling his own works as average and dull. Her frustration grows, and she dares Jonathan to give her poor grades on her tests. Jonathan maintains his belief in their roles as master and student, while she accuses him of being jealous because he can't achieve what she has. After this tense moment, Cairo storms out of the classroom, leaving her story in a school administrator's mailbox. Miller heads home and shares the challenging day he had with his wife, detailing his encounter with Cairo and her story. Intrigued by Cairo's writing, his wife prompts a heated discussion that inadvertently involves Boris. Meanwhile, Cairo seeks comfort in drinks with her friend Winnie after feeling rejected by Miller. As the evening progresses and the drinks flow, they playfully decide to take compromising photos to tease Boris, adding humor to their night out. Just then, Jonathan receives a call from the principal's office. Beatrix hands him the phone, and he listens as they accuse him of having an inappropriate relationship with Cairo. Jonathan denies the accusation and reassures Beatrix that it isn't true. However, Beatrix warns him about the potential consequences, mentioning that he could lose both his job and his wife if the allegations are substantiated. The next day, Cairo is absent from class as she meets with the principal. Meanwhile, Jonathan continues teaching but seems visibly upset by her absence. After class, a student expresses how much Cairo means to her. But despite Winnie's efforts to make Jonathan feel guilty, he remains unaffected and unwilling to engage in any discussion on the matter. As Cairo's plans unfold, Jonathan is summoned to a meeting with the school management. Both Cairo and Professor Miller are questioned extensively about their interactions during classes and whether they had any close encounters outside of school. Cairo's responses imply a deeper connection, causing Miller to feel concerned about his professional future and reputation. He finds himself in a difficult position due to Cairo's statements. When the principal finds Cairo's statements unchanged, he decides to suspend Jonathan. Boris approaches him after leaving the office, expressing disappointment and advising Jonathan to be mindful of his limits to avoid escalating the situation. After delivering his message, Boris leaves Jonathan alone. When Jonathan gets home, he reluctantly tells Beatrix he was suspended. She quickly asks if something happened. 
but he denies it, only admitting he gave Cairo special treatment. Beatrix doesn't buy it and keeps pressing until he confesses. When she asks if he has feelings for Cairo, Jonathan hesitates and can't deny it, leading to a loud argument filled with hurtful words. Furious, Beatrix storms out, saying she wants a divorce. At the same time, Jonathan speaks to Cairo about the potential consequences of her actions, warning her that she might cause him to lose his job. However, Cairo brushes off these concerns, viewing it as her greatest accomplishment and even including it in her college essay. She explains to Winnie that Jonathan didn't think highly of her, so this was her way of getting back at him. Cairo's essay paints a vivid picture of the potential consequences awaiting Jonathan's relationship with her. As she concludes her writing, the movie ends.